the King of Great Britain dictated the establishment of an absolute tyranny over the 13 colonies. The fate of Americans under his rule was evident. Therefore, these constrained conditions needed to be recognized and overthrown. Moreover, Americans feared independence, not only because they thought better of the old regime than it deserved, but because they had no plans for a new one. It would ultimately be a sixpence pamphlet that would give Americans the right and responsibility to derive their power not from birth, but rather the ballot. Insight. Revolution. The birth of a nation. The quill of Thomas Paine. Seventeen seventy six. Tensions surmounted in the British colonies after the passing of a series of oppressive acts and taxes that had enraged and belittled the colonists. Their battle cry of freedom became Taxation without representation is tyranny. However, the colonists did not understand the true meaning behind what they desired. They were afraid of the consequences of liberty. Dissolving the political bands that once connected the mother country with themselves instigated fear among Americans. Having fired the first shots at Lexington and Concord, burning the British Navy in Boston, confronting the British upon the hill, there still seemed to be a hesitancy among the colonies. Thomas Paine, an unaccomplished, middle-aged Englishman, wielding a letter of introduction from Benjamin Franklin, would see it as his responsibility to confront colonial fears and present the colonists with examples on how they could survive without Great Britain. Paine's common sense accomplished what even the bloodshed at Lexington and Concord could not. A wholesale annihilation of the emotional and intellectual ties that wound the American colonies to the British crown. His word would bestow a right and a sense of responsibility for liberty in the soul of each colonist. On January 9th, the same day James Wilson proposed that Congress once again disavow any desire for independence, the Philadelphia Press distributed the first copies of Common Sense. Paine's role in the movement for independence was the mobilization of a people into action. He made sure to enlighten his readers to the reasons of separation. Knowing the majority of people were not the elites that sat in the Continental Congress, Paine pursued his argument with the ruthless economy, tracing almost every evil in colonial society back to what he saw as the root evil of British rule. His direct manner and common language was thoroughly understood by the common man. And Paine really was of the people. He was just a common guy. You know, he wasn't highly educated and all this stuff other than self-educated. But he wasn't, and he didn't speak that way. He just spoke like people spoke. So, um, so the impact uh, was very, was very dramatic right then. One by one, Paine isolated and attacked the individual strands of habituated thought that, woven together, formed the enduring bond between king and subject. He turned a cold age of enlightenment gaze upon the practice of hereditary rule to the right of claiming citizenship when he wrote. American freedom would never be secure under British rule. The so much boasted Constitution of England was deeply flawed. Certainly, much of Thomas Paine's case against the monarchy had already been present in the colonial press. However, common sense gathered those arguments together and used them to instill a common responsibility. In short, the solution was a revolution. Everything that is right or natural pleads for separation. The blood of the slain, the weeping voice of nature cries, Tis time to part. Even the distance at which the Almighty has placed England and America is a strong and natural proof that the authority of the one over the other was never the design of heaven. Paine commands the colonists to reclaim their natural rights and proclaim their legal rights. How Paine wrote was as important as what he wrote. The ultimate result of Paine's language was not only the unification of states, but the unification of rights and responsibilities. There was not a common Catholic, nor was there an elite or commoner people, but there was a common American spirit when it came to the pursuit of life, liberty, and property through independence from Great Britain. The only solution then was to redesign the government, eliminate monarchy and hereditary rule, and form a government that in the end was self-government. You, know, you guys are talking about rights and responsibility. You don't just have the right to govern yourself, you have the responsibility to do it correctly, I mean, to, to, to help benefit everybody. And that's what, that's what he was all about. He said, our government... Republicanism to Paine meant not a particular form of government, 
but a government that constituted for the public good, as opposed to one that served despotic ends. Payne defined, better than any other founding father, the American revolutionary cause as ordinary patriots came to define it, not as a transatlantic tax revolt or a struggle for independence, but as an effort to give birth to a new social and political world, a cause for all mankind. To accomplish this radical transformation was subject to citizen, Payne did not use classical pieces of literature that an overwhelming majority of colonists did not read. Common sense was actually filled with biblical references and quotations in support of his arguments of colonists claiming their natural and legal rights. Payne's primary motivation was to stir the passions and prejudices of his mostly protestant audience and have them embrace the rights to liberty and republicanism. Because of the unique geographical, social, and political importance of Philadelphia, what might have remained merely a local phenomenon in another American city was able to engage a truly national audience. Within the first three months, 120,000 copies of Common Sense had been sold, and by the end of the year, over 500,000. Payne's call to action would be felt soon after its initial publication. The correspondence of the members of Congress demonstrated the direct impact Common Sense had on colonists. It redoubled the conviction of some independents, swayed the minds of many middle grounders, and in some cases, even turned Tories into Whigs. But the most important role Common Sense would play was breaking the deadlock between entrenched loyalist forces with the revitalized pro-independence delegates. Edmund Burke argued for the retention of what was antique, tried, and tested. The destruction of the apparatus of the ancient regime clearly alarmed those who felt civilization itself would be compromised. The English constitution was robust and should be defended because it stood the test of time and conveyed benefits upon its people. Therefore, Payne's pamphlets negated the very core of English society that had survived so well and for so many years. And common sense was to say, put all the spurious philosophy to side and rely on your own common sense and uh, the, the motivation, skill and human spirit that you have to push forward. Common sense confronted the antiquated doctrines of the past and set forth an ardent argument that ultimately becomes a manifesto for a democratic America. By developing a more democratic language of politics and advancing a more inclusive concept of we the people, Common Sense laid out a cause of independence but empowered the rights and responsibilities of the people to restructure the political and social order. It was more than a revolution. Um, it was more than a, a quest for liberty. It was more than a quest for the rights of old rights of Englishmen. It was for a whole new set of rights, if you will, or a whole new holiday, a whole new, a whole new world. Um, at, at, at the... the effects of Thomas Paine's writings on the future of America were instant. Within five months of the publication of Common Sense, the Committee of Five forged the responsibility that Paine bestowed when they penned, we, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America. No longer were they the subjects of a British crown, but rather the citizens of a nation, beholding the rights and responsibilities that came with popular sovereignty and self-government. Eleven years later, the same ideals that were incorporated into the crux of the Declaration were studied by James Madison, who later wrote the U.S. Constitution. This crucial document laid down the rights and responsibilities of all American citizens, just as Payne would have wished. Penned in ink, but set in stone, by the men and women that make up the we the people, Payne's ability to instill a right and a responsibility of a citizenry will be forever recognized. Payne was able to touch the hearts and the minds of timid individuals who realized they had the responsibility to overthrow the British monarchy if they wanted the right to republicanism. Payne explained that the colonists did not have to fear any opposition because they had liberty as their ally. Payne's ability to transform the sophisticated notion of self-government and present it to the common people caused the success that resulted in the birth of a nation. Common Sense, the 46-page pamphlet that took the American citizenry from the Confederation of States to the Unification of States to the United States of America.